Looking to satisfy your potato cravings without engaging in an epic battle with your blood sugar levels? Well, have no fear, my fellow spud enthusiasts, for there is a sneaky way to enjoy those delicious tubers without undergoing a glycemic meltdown. And it all comes down to this handy little thing called resistant starch. Watch the video and discover how to outsmart those tricky carbs and potatoes and finally enjoy your favorite vegetable without any guilt or discomfort. Who said winning at life was hard? Type 2 diabetes is on the rise, right? As many societal shifts in the diet and lifestyle is causing this, and a high sugar diet has been shown to increase insulin levels cause fat gain, ultimately contribute to type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, kidney disease, you name it. We predict this problem to affect up to 440 million people worldwide by the year 2030. The risk of type 2 diabetes has been associated to both high intakes of starch and low intakes of dietary fiber. The reverse is true as well. The risk of type 2 diabetes may also be related to quality of carbohydrates consumed too. So most foods contain starch, right? A form of carbohydrate that may be classified into three categories based on how easily they are digested. Now there are rapidly digestible starches, there are slowly digestible starches, and there are resistant starches. Now the small intestine quickly absorbs the rapidly digestible ones, right? Once you eat it. Rapid elevation in blood glucose results from this, but slow ones, the slowly digested ones, create a steady supply of glucose. So it can be used as a source of fuel for an extended period of time. The digestive tracts of healthy humans are typically incapable of digesting resistant starch. It's a novel kind of dietary fiber. And potato has a lot of this actually. Now, instead, it is, you know, those resistant starches are fermented by the gut bacteria in the colon into beneficial short chain fatty acids. There are five distinct forms of resistant starches designated by the enzymes that are unable to degrade them. <laughs> so we call them to be fancy, RS1, RS2, RS3, RS4, RS5. Now, RS2 refers to the unaltered granules, such as raw potato or banana starches, right? Whereas RS3 refers to the altered starch. But the research has shown that resistant starch can reduce post-meal blood sugar spikes, improve insulin sensitivity, and reduce the risk of type 2 diabetes and obesity. However, there was a, you know, there is a wide variation of resistant starch content of starches derived from various plants. Now, potato has surpassed cereals as the most widely consumed crop in human history. Can you believe that? <laughs> People love it. It has a lot of useful nutrients though, like the resistant starches, the fiber, bioactive substances. So don't make the potato enemy yet. I'll give you the secret today. About half of the world's fresh potatoes are consumed within a day of harvest. Now the remaining are typically put to use in food industry as additives or as feed for livestock and so forth. But resistant starch really makes up between 47 to 59 percent of raw potatoes dry weight. So, however, when RS2, that enzyme we talked about, gels, it becomes very easy to digest. So that resistant starch that is in the potato, actually, when it turns into gel form, it is very easy to digest. So that is making up the vast majority of the resistant starch in the raw potatoes. So the large amount of resistant starch in raw potatoes is almost never used despite the fact that cooked potatoes and potato products made using this standard cooking oil methods, such as, you know, on your stove and stuff like that, or even oven, have very little resistant starch left. 
just only 2 to 4 percent of dry matter. Now, I'll tell you how to improve that in a second. Many improved processing methods, for example, including using different heat sources and amounts of water, like cooking times and temperatures, actually have been tried to retain as much resistance charge as possible in the processed potato. So that's why they, you know, the food industry is trying to promote that, hey, our potatoes is better, the other one says my potato is better. But what we know is microwave, yeah, you heard me right, the microwaving was superior to other cooking methods. And everybody has microwave nowadays, right? So it's better than boiling, better than steaming. So when you microwave it, you reserve the most resistant starch in potatoes, especially if you keep the potatoes like very cool or even freeze them. You're changing the chemical structure in there and keeping the resistant starch in the potato. Now, starch grains may only gelatinize to a certain extent when cooked in the presence of water because of that. Now, starch's gelatinization can be slowed and it is resistant to enzymes increased by reducing the amount of water present around the potato. So, the lesson here, don't mix the water and the potato. Because the amount of water in potatoes can be reduced, for example, if you really want to get rid of the potato, like you don't want to mix the water and the potato, but if you want to get rid of the water out of the potato, you can use some freeze drying methods without causing potatoes to brown. And it was speculated that rewarming previously cooked potatoes also in a microwave and subsequently freezing them will also preserve a substantial portion of the resistant starch. So the microwave heated and freeze dried potatoes were compared to their physiochemical characteristics and flavor profiles in some studies. So after being in microwave heated form from a freeze dried state, the resistant starch value of potatoes remain unchanged from it is raw state. So you kept all that resistant starch that you couldn't digest, but it's very good for your gut bacteria, okay? It was discovered that the freezing potatoes before microwaving them was an effective technique to preserve that high resistant starch. So let's summarize. Who would knew that cooking a potato involves so much science, right? It turns out that the raw potatoes have an abundance of resistant starch, which is a fancy way of saying it is good for your gut. However, and also you can say that the resistant starch will not let the blood sugar spike. However, after regular cooking, most of that resistant starch goes down the drain, or rather, down the garbage disposal. So how can we preserve that precious resistant starch? Well, enter the microwave. Put that into microwave after freezing it, or maybe even previously cooked food, put it in the freezer, defrost it in the microwave, and that's it. That's your ticket. But wait, there's more actually. Not only do microwave potatoes have more resistant starch, but they also have a special baked flavor that is sure to impress your taste buds. So next time you're feeling lazy and want to nuke a spud, remember that not all microwaves are created equal and neither are potatoes. Well, 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 look who made it to the end of this video. Congratulations, you have won the title of most dedicated viewer. But wait, there's more. Before you go off on your merry way, don't forget to leave a comment below, please. Who knows, your comment could be the next internet sensation. Plus, let's be real here. Don't you want to show off your witty humor and charming personality to the rest of the world in the comment section? I mean, everyone needs their daily dose of laughter and you could be just the person to provide it. So, what are you waiting for? Scroll down and let the puns and jokes begin. And remember to check sugarmds.com. You will find good stuff. I'll see you next time. 
Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this channel so far and I hope you subscribed already. If you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.